<laughs> so was, was that Sorry, hang on. Ethan was just saying something. One second. Yes, Ethan. Continue. So, yes, I will not actually, bother you anymore. Sorry, Steve. Okay, one second. Yeah. Lectures together, they lasted an hour and a half, and it was it got really boring, like the first five minutes. Oh no. <laughs> by that and by that time, most of the party was done. Oh, that's annoying. But who doesn't love lectures? Lectures are the best. You get to learn <laughs> stuff from that. I mean, they're so exciting. I, who 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 loves who doesn't love a nice lecture? You know, sitting <laughs> well, there, Stephen, everyone's quiet. Maybe next year you can have a falafel to celebrate. <laughs> I'm not making Stephen, falafels. Stephen, I might pay attention to a lot more lectures if people spoke with emotion. <laughs> Fair enough. Sure. Okay, so speaking of emotion, of our class today is IDF, Ethics, and Wars. So Notice, but I've worn my IDF shirt very often. Oh, we can't see you. Your video is not on. Well, I'm not wearing it at the moment. Oh. Okay, fair enough. That's good. So you can see there are two photos here. This is like our Israel moment of the week. So the first one that happened was on Thursday when it was Independence Day. Every year the, the Air Force flies over Israel and they do a whole air show in the sky, which is really cool. And this year when we were driving to our hike, we saw, well, my husband's in the Air Force, so he knew, he's seen a lot of this stuff before, but we managed to see that there were three planes refueling mid-air, which was really cool. Yeah, um, how do they refuel mid-air? Like, do they it's switch tanks? From or? one big plane, it has, like, these pipes that go out to the other planes. It's really cool. Anyway, um, so that's one thing that was about the IGF that was happened in Israel this week. Really exciting to watch all the planes fly over all of Israel. And the second thing, a bit more on a sad note, have you all heard of what happened in Nepal? No. No. There was a huge I'm earthquake. Apparently an earthquake. Yeah, massive, massive earthquake. And lots of people have been killed and lots of people are missing. Also, a lot of Israelis go to Nepal to, um, to, to hike after the army. So uh, there's lots of Israelis who are missing as well at the moment. And the army, one of the things that they do, which is really incredible, is often when there are natural disasters all over the world, they will go to those places to help the authorities there recover bodies from the mess. doesn't matter who. It's not like they're only going to help Israelis. They'll help everybody. Um, and give humanitarian aid and assistance to those people. So they already sent out a plane to Nepal, and uh, they're going to be helping there. So that's just one of the things that the Army does in addition to the regular things, which I think is pretty amazing. It's amazing what the IDF does. Yeah. So we're going to find out even more about the IDF today and learn a bit more. IDF, first of all, does anyone know what it stands for? Israeli Defense Force. Excellent. Okay. But I don't know what Saha stands for. Tzva Hagana Israel, which is the same thing in Hebrew. Tzva is army, Hagana defense, Israel for Israel, Israel defense forces. Okay, so let's get to the nitty gritty of the army. If you see people, Israeli soldiers in the street, you may see either one of these uniforms. Actually, there is another one, what my husband we, wears. We saw some arm, army um, women at the Western Wall when oh, I went there in nice. Israel. Some soldiers, female soldiers, yeah. Yes. Um, so besides, I forgot to mention that there's also a blue uniform. That's for people who are already working in the army above and beyond their three-year service. So on the side here, we have the names in Hebrew of three units that each of those units have different uniforms. So I want you to think, I'm going to give you about two minutes to see if you can figure out. I'll just read them for you so you know what it says because there are no vowels. The one on top says, Chel Ha'avir. Don't, no one give it away. Okay. The next one says, Chel Ha'raglim. Okay. Regel. Just to give you a bit of a clue. And the last one is Chel Hayam. Ooh, ooh, I know okay. what a wait, is. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, is. Don't, 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 wait, wait. I don't want you to say it. Everyone think for a minute which of those parts of the army, those groups of the army, are connected to which uniform. See if you can figure that out. And also what each of them means. 
You type it in the chat box and then send it all at the same time? Yes. So type it in the chat box. Don't send it yet. I'll tell you when to send it. I'll give you about a minute more to look at it and see. If you want me to, if you want me to say the names again, I'm happy to. Yes, please. Okay. So the first one on top, top right is Khel Ha'avir. The next one is Khel Araglim. And the last one is Khel Ayam. And Khel basically means um, force. Like, is your defense force? So the force. Something force. I can tell you what all of them are in English and you can figure out which is which. Uh, there's the infantry, the people who are in tanks and on the ground. There is the air force. And there is the navy. Okay, so it's one of those. Each of the, the one of those three, and then you have to see which uniform, which colour uniform. So the one on the left is white, so the one in the middle is tan, and the one on the right is green. And bonus points if you can tell me who is wearing the green uniform. Famous personality. Oh, timer is done. Okay. Okay, okay, so you can um, now send in your answers. Well, I don't know really what to, how to type it. Can I just say it? Uh, you didn't type it yet? Hang on. Well, so so far, we'll start with what you said first, Stephen. You said uh, the picture left is. hand picture is the? Ha'il Hayam, which is, which is Navy, I'm sure. Ha'il Hayam is Navy, yes. Um, Yam is, uh, C. means C. Great. Ethan, do you want to tell us about the... Uh, which one? The green one? Oh. Ethan? Um, which? The, the metal Hebrew one? The, no, the green, green uniform. uniform one. Which, which, which name is it? Which is it talking about? Navy? Is it uh, Air Force or Infantry? Air Force. Mm, I thought it was infantry. Yeah, Chayil Haraglim. Why? Each of you can tell me why. I just thought that first soldiers wore green uniforms. Okay, and Ethan, why infantry. do you think that? And Haraglim is means feet, right? Excellent. With yep. legs. Yep. Great. Uh, is Haraglim feet or legs or both? Why you think it's an, uh, Air Force? Say that again. Uh, I asked Ethan why he thought it was Air Force, Ethan. and I think you also wrote, Eleanor, that it was Air Force. Why do you think it's Air Force? Or is it just right. a guess? Are you talking to me or Ethan? Both of you. Oh. But Ethan, you started guess. replying? It was kind of a guess. Kind of a guess? Okay. Eleanor? Um, and we're talking about with uh, the green one? Yeah. Okay, I think that's Air Force because in America that's the same color for Air Force. It's kind of that greenish, brownish color. Um, and I think he has some sort of a badge on that, you know, signifies Air Force. So. Interesting. Okay, well, I have to say, sorry to tell you, green is actually infantry. As you can see in the background of the picture, there's a tank. So that's kind of a bit of a clue, I only realize now, um, that it's the ground forces, the infantry. Okay, okay, and that means that the one in the middle is? Air Force. Air Force, okay. Um, that's the general Air Force uniform, which I think is the nicest one, but uh, that's just me. And bonus okay, point, who is the man on the right-hand picture in the green uniform, in the infantry uniform? Well, I read Linton. By the way, I just did a Google, and the Air Force uniforms are more so gray than green. Oh, okay. definitely more green, but yeah, Air Force. <laughs> I think they're green. Who is the man? Who is the man in the picture in the green uniform? There was a soldier a few years back who was kidnapped. That's, a, that's the one who was kidnapped. I forgot his name. Um, he was traded in for what is it? One thousand. Um, more than a terrorists. thousand terrorists, yeah. Just for one soldier. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Starts with a G. Uh, blanking on his name. It's been, t it's been two and a half years since I've heard his name. 
Okay. His name is Gilad. Is Gilad Shalit? Please. Oh yeah. Okay. Gilad Shalit. If I definitely and remember him, I just don't remember his name. Fair enough. Good. Okay. So now we've learned a bit about the different things. So as you can see, Chel Avir. Avir means air. So that's the air force. That's the top one. Okay, next it says Chel Haraglim, which is the infantry, and on the bottom, Chel Hayam, the navy. Yam is sea. So, so which one is the sea? Which one is um? Which one is the air force? The one on the top that says Chel Haavir. Avir means so, air. I mean, which picture? Oh, which picture in the middle, in the tan yeah, uniform? I thought, I thought so. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've had a bit of a look at how the uniforms look. <laughs> We want to see what's it like to be in the in the army in Israel. Do you know who needs to go into the army? Everyone. That's not, that's not completely religiously committed. Okay. At what age? Um, right after high school, I think. Right. Does anyone know? Isn't it like eighteen or nineteen? Ethan, what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much right after high school. Yeah, yep, you guys are right. Straight after high school, already when you're in your last year of high school, you get a, you start the process of interviews and physical tests and things like that. And then you get accepted, you apply to lots of different groups in the army and you see if you get accepted or not to the one you want to get into. So someone, I have a, a very good family friend who always dreamed of being a pilot and getting into being a pilot is very, very difficult. You have to have a perfect profile. You, your profile is based on your physical and um, mental tests that you do. And you also, yeah, so he was working out already from the age of 14 to try and get into be a pilot. And thank God today he's a pilot. So, and even once you get into being a pilot, not everyone who gets into the course actually becomes a pilot at the end of the day. So... Uh, where are we? Hmm. Yeah, Adam, well, can you hear well, us when now? You're, um, well, when you're doing the, uh, when you're in the military, you don't necessarily have to be on the battlefield or in the air shooting or on one of those navy ships. You can be in a control room or monitoring yeah. or strategizing in a war room or 100%. something like that. It's, it's not necessarily actually having to fight. Definitely. Or you could be in education. There's the education corps. Where, as long as whatever you're doing is is helpful towards the military for your three years if you're a man, two years if you're a woman. Exactly, exactly. Although there is a bit of a stigma in Israel that, you know, combat is better. Um, yeah. But, and the name that they give to people who are not combat, well, combat in Hebrew is called Kravi. Krav is a war. In Eng uh, The name for someone who's not combat is Jobnik. Someone who just does jobs, like little, it, it's a very derogatory kind of term. Um, great. Okay. Uh, just helping Eleanor with her problems here. Okay. So if we move on, what is it like to move into, to, to go into the army? So I'm going to give you a clip of a video now, which is a trailer for a movie um, about that follows a group of soldiers and sees how the process works. So don't forget to mute yourself and enjoy the video. And let me know something that you learned from watching the video. Oh, good, you can hear us, excellent. Okay, so enjoy.
Okay. What did you learn from that? Write it in the chat box, please. Okay, let's see what you guys have learned. Oh, you saw the whole movie, Ethan. Amazing. Where did you see it? At uh, Western Age School. At what? Western Age School. Ah, okay. Wow. Yeah, definitely, Stephen. Yeah, and it's crazy to think how young they are. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, they're just a couple years older than me. Yeah, not that much older at all than you guys. And to me, they look very young. Um, and I know my brother did the army and my cousin did the army. And it's definitely, there's a big feeling of brotherhood. You could see that in the movie, right? That everyone, you're going through such intense situations together, you become really, really close. And people stay in touch. Also, after the army, do you have you heard of something called Miluim? Miluim is when people finish the army after three years, they're not finished because when there's a war or even just a regular thing, until the age of I think it's 35 or 40 something, it depends, or if you, unless you got injured or something, you need to keep going back to the army every year for training to make sure you're still fit so that, God forbid, in the case of a war, you can go back to war. So. It's always a part of your life. It's a big part of life here in Israel. And it's a really important, if you want to understand life in Israel, I think it's a really important thing to try and understand the army. And one thing, just very shortly, there's a lot more. We could do a whole class next week, if, we, if you'd like, or possibly, um, about ethics in the army. But this is just a short paragraph about what the spirit of the army is. And, and people at the beginning of when they're learning when they start the army, they teach them all about um, what the goals are of the army and how you should act as a soldier in the Israeli Defense Forces. Um, and a lot of those values are taken from Jewish values, the values that are in that the IDF holds dear. And there are lots of questions that can come up if you're in a situation of war, um, and that's something that people have to deal with on a constant basis. So now what we're going to do is, um, first of all, I'd like you to take a guess when these two pictures were taken. So start with the one on the left. I'm going to take a wild guess. Okay. 1875. No. Later. 1876. The state of Israel didn't come into being until like 1960. I'm just kidding. Thank, um, well, not 1960, what year? Thank you, Eleanor. 1948. So that photo is from the first war of Israel, 1948, otherwise known as? What's the, the name war? of that war? No, the first war. War of Independence. Yes, the War of Independence. And the photo on the right-hand side? I know Hebrew, but I don't know Yom much Kippur about history. War? The Yom Kippur War? No, the state photo war? on the right is the most recent war that we've had. Kippur War. No. Nope. It's not necessarily called a war. It was called more a mission. But it was a war for all intents and purposes. Soldiers went in and were killed. Very recently. You guys should remember it. Oh, this was when, um, this was, was this when, um, what's his face was captured, uh, it starts with a G, we just talked about him. Gila Is this when no, was that was also a recent war. More recently than that. Can um, you give us a clue? Uh, last year. Um, what happened is last there a specific year? name for this war? There is. Is 
the operation. War between, um... it, it should be called the upper, an operation. Operation. In Hebrew, it's called Tzuk Eitan. And in English, they give it, gave it the name Protective Edge. Operation Protective Edge. In the summer where the um, army went into Gaza because of all the tunnels that Hamas were building oh, and yeah. all the rockets that they were shooting. So that photo is from the most recent war. So we have a photo from the first war of the State of Israel and the most recent war of the State of Israel. And we're going to look now at a bit, a few different wars. You can choose which war you want to look at. I'm going to give you now the link to a Google presentation. You can look at a video about that war or about that event. Um, and what you need to do is tell us, it's as if we're at a conference, a meeting of veterans from those wars, and answer one of the questions that's on the Google presentation. Uh, tell us a memory from that war, something, uh, what, was, why, what did that war achieve? Why did they go to war? What, what was the purpose of that war, uh, et cetera. So let me just get you the link for that. Here we go. And now you have no excuse not to know the history of the wars of Israel, Stephen, after this. Right? Um, what's Israel? <laughs> what's a war? What's <laughs> really life? Funny. Okay. So look at this Google presentation. When you're all on it, I think one person still needs to get on. Excellent. Everyone's on. So. Um, the questions that you need to answer are in the second slide. And from slide three to slide seven are the different wars that you can look at, okay? Wait, each, wait, each person in One. your group? No, 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 not group, sorry, I'm sorry, that was from, I shouldn't have, I should have deleted that. Um, basically, yeah, uh, I changed it a bit for you guys. Oh, um, so I, guess I, there's a class. I guess there's a bigger <laughs> class than ours. Yes. yes. So um, you can choose which of these wars you want to look at. It's okay if you both do the same war, but ideally I'd prefer you each do something different. So who wants to do the War of Independence? Milchemet Asmaut. During the Six-Day War. Okay, who said, who said they wanted to do War of Independence first? Eleanor will. Eleanor, great. Okay, okay you know, great. So Eleanor is doing the War of Independence. Uh, Stephen, Six Day War, and Ethan, Yom Kippur War. Excellent. So uh, don't forget to mute yourself, watch your video, and then answer one of the questions that's on the second slide. Um, you don't have to answer it by writing. We'll discuss it together after. So I'm giving you four, five minutes maximum, and we'll see how we go from there, okay? Great. Oh, we watch the videos. Never mind.
Where do we answer the question? Okay, I can hear again. Like right. I don't have permission to write on this one. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Where do we write our answers to the question? We can't right now. Hey, um, Michal, we can't hear you. Well, at least I can. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no one can hear me. So sorry about that. Um, Wait, so the you... timer is gone. Um, who, Stephen has disappeared. Um, so I guess he won't be presenting the War of 1948. Did anyone else have a chance to look at it? I did. Sorry? I said I did. Oh, great. So do you want to tell us about 1948 then, Eleanor? Oh, oh yeah, sorry, you did 1948. 1948. So you did the Independence Day War, didn't you? I did. Not Stephen. So go ahead. Okay, so um, my video was all about 1948. And so I thought it was really interesting um, because they were talking about how uh, – how all of these Arab countries had teamed up to take down Israel mm -hmm. and America wasn't so sure that they would like to support Israel on, you know, on this war that was going to happen. And a lot of people lost their lives. But finally, when the United Nations uh, decided to make Israel a state, it was a really, really, really big deal. And, um, but that's when they started going to war and it took them a year to, it took Israel a year to, um, get out of this war and again people lost their lives and about they said I think 50% of the people were Holocaust survivors yeah were fighting I think um, so I thought that was really interesting it really is and do you know what happened at the end of the war which area did the Jews um, lose control of half of Jerusalem I didn't see that Excellent. Thank you, Ethan. Yes, half of Jerusalem. Do you know which half? East or West? East Jerusalem. That's correct. East Jerusalem was lost in that battle. The Jews didn't manage to um, 
get to Jerusalem, and that became Jordanian after the war. Okay, Jordan managed to conquer that territory, and it was Jordanian. There was a big divider between East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem. There was a gate called the Mantelbaum Gate, and that leads us to the 1967 war. Which what happened in the 1967 war, uh, the Six Day War? I didn't. I wasn't doing that. Did it? But uh, does anyone know? Even. Anyone know what happened? Captured a lot more of Israel. Yes, in Israel particular, <laughs> the Western Wall. In particular, the Western Wall, the old city Jerusalem, also um, the mountain behind the Temple Mount. Okay, well, the mountain behind the cartel, behind the Western Wall, Temple Mount was conquered, although we gave that back to the Palestinians. I'm not sure why. Um, anyway, point being, it was an incredible, incredible thing for people who hadn't been, it had been 19 years since Jews had been allowed to go to the cartel and pray, and it was really incredible. And the famous thing from that war was Har Habayit Biadeinu, the Temple Mount is in our hands, and there was a lot of joy, and it was amazing also that the war was achieved in six days, even though, and do you know how the war started? How? Israel bombed the Egyptian Air Force. Basically, the Egyptian, Syrians, the same thing as 1948 seemed like it was happening again. Everyone was ganging up on Israel, but this time Israel didn't want to be left in a year-long battle, they didn't want to be just sitting ducks, so they acted I, I've first. I've heard this from my dad's point of view. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like apparently Egypt decided to attack Israel, and they just started right. celebrating, and Israel yeah. got wind of it, and they're like, okay, let's go bomb your air force. And yeah, and they, they did, and that, that helped was... them win the war in six days, the fact that they could bomb the Egyptian and then, air force, and there was, they had no planes. And then they bombed, and then after the... And after that, they drove their tanks and their air force to meet the Syrian tanks. As a, yeah, because they, because the troops had a mass on those borders. There were Syrians right on the borders. There were lots of things that were happening that caused that to happen. Okay, Ethan, do you want to tell us about the Yom Kippur War? Well, to start, they were completely unprepared, and it was a surprise attack. Yep. And Yom Kippur, it happened on Yom Kippur. So yeah, you're not supposed to really surprise. do as much. Yeah, and nobody was expecting it. Like most of the IDF was off, or, and uh, Egypt and Syria both launched a coordinated at a surprise attack. Mm -hmm. Egypt on the south, and Syria on the south and northern fronts. Syria on the south, no. Syria yeah, on the north. Syria is north of Israel. Yeah, but apparently they attacked on both the north and south. Maybe Syria on the north and Egypt on the south? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Egypt did go on the south. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So okay. Israel, like, massed, uh, Israel lost a lot of lives, but they massed their troops mm -hmm. and was able to drive both of them back and got some of the Gala Heights, captured some of the Gala Golan Heights. He Golan Heights, that's Golan. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, not just the Golan Heights, the, all of Egypt, the, they basically. <laughs> a lot of Egypt. Yeah. And then they and made a peace treaty with, with uh, Egypt, excellent. and because of that peace treaty, a UN emergency force was, was put on standby, and we gave back some country that's three times our size. Yeah, and, and that also would have given us oil when, and tourism, would have been really good for Israel. Yeah. And, but we also oh got... But we also, since that treaty, there's been no more regional wars. That's true. So we we got peace, I guess you could say, for that. So talking about the Yom Kippur War, we're just going to finish with this story. Um, so who wants to be the narrator? Who wants to be the soldier? And I'll, I'll be what it, so there are three tasks. I'll be whatever you guys don't want to be. There's the narrator, a soldier, and Golda Meir, who was the Prime Minister of Israel during the Yom Kippur War. Uh, wait, so there's Golda, narrator, and who? And the soldier. I'll be Golda. Okay, so Golda's on the next page. So, uh, Ethan, what do you want to be, the soldier or the narrator? Soldier. Okay, so I'll be the narrator. During Yom Kippur War 1973, Golda Meir visits troops. One tank crew member, he seemed to be in his mid-twenties, raised his hands. 
He was caked with black basalt dust from head to toe, and his only contrasting feature were the whites of his eyes. I have a question, he said in a voice throaty with exhaustion. My father was killed in the War of 48, and we won. My uncle was killed in the War of 56, and we won. My brother lost an arm in the 67 War, and we won. Last week, I lost my best friend over there. He was pointing to the Valley of Tears. And we're going to win. But is all our sacrifice worthwhile, Golda? What's the use of our, of our sacrifice if we can't win the world peace? So what do you think? What would you answer him? Before we speak um, yes. his answer. I'd say yes, it's all worthwhile. Yes, you're losing uh, loved ones um, dramatically and very quick and very quickly, but um, I think it's worth it because it's for the state of Israel and it's for everybody. So it's worth it. Well, you, it's good that you're reading Gold in the Ear then. Ethan, do you have another? Do you agree, disagree with Eleanor? Do you think it's worth it? I think it's worth it because we're eventually going to win peace. Okay, great. Or they're, they're eventually going to realize that they can't win. By Tara, I hope. <laughs> okay, here we go. Gold in the ear. This is the answer. I weep for your loss just as I grieve for all, all of our dead. I lie awake at night thinking of them. And I must tell you in all honesty, were our sacrifices for ourselves alone, then perhaps you would be right. I am not all... I'm not at all sure they would be worthwhile. But if our sacrifices are for the sake of the whole Jewish people, then I believe with all my heart that any price is worthwhile. So you definitely read her mind. Um, <laughs> there is a bit much bigger thing at stake here, and I think that that's something when these 18-year-olds go into the army, they realize that you're not. it's not just about you. It's about more than you. There are greater things in the world, and it's very hard. It's still a very difficult answer. I'm not sure if... If God forbid something happened to me or someone I knew, if I could deal with it and say that that's the thing. But at the end of the day, there is something really great out there. And at the end of the day, we're striving for the day when a man uh, will not lift up a sword against another man and will no longer learn war. We hope that one day the Israel Defense Forces won't be needed and we'll be able to live in peace and we won't have to send off people to war. But until then, we will try our hardest to defend Israel and to make sure that there is no more war um, and to protect all the people of Israel. So I hope you enjoyed today's class, um, dedicated to the memory of the soldiers who fell protecting the state of Israel, um, especially the ones who fell in the most recent war. Uh, and next week, um, unless you guys, let me know if you want to learn about, uh, what do we say, ethics in war. Otherwise, we'll be starting a two-week session on Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yes, you might know a rap about that. Okay, have a great week. Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov. Thank Bye. you. No worries.